So back in 2009, I had read about a brand new and very exciting product that, um, being an early adopter, I just had to try out. And that was the Plex Talk Pocket. The device had not been out for more than, gosh, a couple weeks. It was literally brand new to the market, nothing like it. Um, had a number of really wonderful things going for it. My favorite was the ability to record DAISY files. And for those of you who are new to my channel and don't know, in a nutshell, without getting super technical, DAISY allows somebody to quickly browse through um, a book or a periodical the same way somebody who is fully sighted would do with the same level of or in sometimes even greater efficiency. And the ability to record in this file format um, has a number of purposes from shopping lists to school lec to school assignments to college lectures to board meetings, you name it. Um, and the Plex Talk Pocket um, at the time was the only player that could do this. So what happened? Well, I was in the middle of recording a very important um, piece for an, for an assignment that I was doing back when I was working on my undergrad degree. My system had a very serious problem. It would, without warning, any audible alerts, anything, would just completely cut off. And unfortunately, that happened right in the middle of this recording. And thankfully, had I not had a, such a um, understanding instructor who allowed me to redo the assignment, I probably would have had to redo the entire course, all because of that one series, all because of that one fault that was rather serious. So I sent the unit back, and they said that they would repair it. Do you know how long it took them to fix? Two months. Two months to get around to getting a replacement. I didn't even, I just said, you know what, that's it. I've waited this long. This is ridiculous. Let's just go ahead and get something else. And at that time, the book sense was coming out. And the book sense was um, similar to the Plex Talk Pocket and that it was a, a, a portable daisy player. It also had a number of interesting features. It had a wider range of file formats at the time, and it had, um, in my opinion, better sounding voices, especially for Bookshare books, which at the time I had more Bookshare books than I did NLS books. Um, So that was my primary player. One of the really cool things about it, in fact, I'll show you. I've got it. I've got the book sense in my hand. One of the really cool things about it is right now it's not on, but if I push, um, there's a. You probably see a button above the directional pad. If I push that button right now. 2:58 a.m. and 54 seconds Monday, February 16th, 2015. I can get a date and time report. It was also the only book player with Bluetooth, and still is, actually. There isn't a single device on the market that has Bluetooth, and it came with a lanyard so I could wear it around my neck so I could listen to my books hands-free. Now, over the years, the software has basically reached the end of its useful period. Um... And what's worse is, recently with the updates, and tell me this is not stupid, um, when you run an update, you have to run it, when you, you download the file, you put the file onto your SD card, that's not a big problem. Of course, these days, compared to the ability to download and update over Wi-Fi for pretty much everything, even book players, and we'll get, that, get to that in a moment, um, to have to put it on an SD card and transfer it that way seems kind of antiquated. But anyway, so you have to do that with this one. And the problem is the fact that you have to do it twice. You run the file, and then you restart the system, and it sounds like everything is okay. It took, 
but according to the manual, you have to go into the menu and run the exact same process twice. Now tell me that's not confusing, because as far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't need to run an update twice just to, um, just to uh, get it to work. And this is not a system where it'll run w once and then it'll automatically go in and do, do the rest of it completely by itself and you don't have to do anything. Nope. When the first part is done, you manually have to go in and select the second part. And I think once it had to do it three times. So tell me that's that tell me that's not crazy, you know? Because of this, I had heard about um, another new player. Well, it wasn't new actually. It came out probably a year after the books the book sense, and it was called the Bookport Plus. The Bookport Plus is essentially because if we go back, oops. Notice that it looks very similar, aside from the color scheme and branding, to the Plex Talk Pocket we discussed in the beginning. This is the exact same hardware. I figured after a couple years they'd have time to work the kinks out. And so why did I go for the Bookport Plus over the Plex Talk Pocket? Well, at the time, the Bookport Plus had its Wi-Fi enabled. The Plex Talk Pocket did not. This is the only player on the market, or was the only player on the market at the time, with Wi-Fi. It's still the only player on the market with Wi-Fi and still able to record DAISY. The BookSense um, later gained the ability to record DAISY files, but the way that it's done in comparison to the Bookport Plus, in my opinion, was a complete um, mess. The cool thing about the Bookport Plus is the fact that you can go in with the record key and you can hit a button and you can record the DAISY files just like you can in the Plex Talk. But compared to the Plex Talk, you go into the help system, it is so much easier to navigate. And compared to the Plex Talk, I think nowadays they're a lot more equal. But back when I first had the Plex Talk, if you compared the Bookport Plus to the Plex Talk at that time, um, the Bookport Plus was miles ahead. One of the things they did was they note they um, took the numeric keypad here which was not used on the book port for, for on the uh, Plex talk for anything and they took it on the book port and utilized it to make navigation around your files so much easier and the help was miles ahead. They took it and utilized it step by step um, they told you step by step exactly what something did, and there was a good reason for it. You know the branding here, APH, American Printing House for the Blind. I grew up with APH products in school. These days, APH is a household name in the classroom for students who are blind. There is not, I am sure, I am sure there is not a student out there, um, whether it be a K through 12 or post secondary, that hasn't heard of and in many, case, use, many cases used an APH product. Um, the Bookport Plus is an, a, a wonderful example of a classroom tool. We go back to the DAISY recording, how we can record classroom notes. The Bookport also stood out in another way, and that is the ability to record, to um, utilize the number pad to create text notes. And they were rudimentary, there was no spell check, and you were limited to computer braille, but, or, or uh, ABC text entry, but the fact that you could do it really helped the Bookport Plus stand out. And it still stands out in that respect today. It's the only player on the market that can record text notes in thumb braille, so if you're not comfortable with entering ABC123 for your characters, you can utilize thumb braille to enter text notes export them on an SD card. The other really cool thing about the book port and the Plex Talk over the Victor uh, over the um, book sense is that there's no required file structure. That is wonderful because I'll tell you something if I put the SD card for my book port into my book sense, the book sense doesn't see anything there. But if I go back and put it in the book port, it's like nothing ever happened. Everything was hunky-dory a-okay. 
So, the book port has served me well for the last couple of years. Unfortunately, the firmware hasn't been updated, and the hardware is six years old, because again, it was based on the Plextalk Pocket, and I got the Plextalk Pocket in 2009. So now, actually, I'm sorry, I said six. It's actually seven years old. No, I'm sorry, no, no, I was right the first time, six. Six years old hard, six year old hardware, and the firmware hasn't been updated in almost two years, and that's not APH's fault. It's the fact that um, I think the hardware has reached the limitation of what you can do with it. I don't know if there's much else they can squeeze into it. Um, but the Bookport Plus still stands out in the fact that it can only that it it's, it's the only um, player on the market with access to internet radio and podcasts that can also take text notes and record DAISY files. That being said, there are even better, even greater enhancements in mainstream technology because the National Library Service has since, um, since I got the Bookport Plus, has developed their own app for, for utilizing NLS books. And to be honest, I use that a lot more than either of the two players. I still use the Bookport when I want to listen to Bookshare files because I do have um, Bookshare books on the SD card. In fact, I'm um, I'm almost done with Steve Jobs' biography, and I've been reading that from Bookshare. But um, so, and I figure, why pay twenty dollars for the Read to Go app when I've got the Bookport Plus, and it'll be able to do that. Um, but in terms of NLS, I've been utilizing the Bard app more than anything, and the reason for that is the fact that the Bard app allows me to download books directly to the iPhone. Excuse me. Compared to the needing to manually transfer things um, excuse me, over the computer by hand, I mean that's just a huge time saver. You could I don't need to be near my computer to get books anymore. Um, so that's one huge um, advantage. One of the interesting little quirks, though, is you can play NLS books on the iPhone, you can play Bookshare books on the iPhone, which are the two that I use most, but you cannot record DAISY files. I was looking earlier for an application that'll be able to replicate the DAISY recording capabilities of the Bookport Plus, and I haven't been able to find anything. Um... So that's basically my history up to this point with digital talking book players. And I recently watched a video on the Victor Reader stream. When I got the Bookport Plus, I was actually looking at either the Bookport Plus or the Victor stream. And at the time, the stream didn't have the ability to download directly um, any content as far as podcasts, NLS books, and Bookshare books. Nowadays, it has um, that ability, and it has the ability in a very, very streamlined way. Um, and it's actually gotten me very interested in upgrading to a Victor stream. And the reason for that is because, for those of you who do not know, I am partially sighted. I have to get the iPhone pretty close to my face in order to see it. Either that or utilize voiceover. And there's only so much that the iPhone can do that an assistive technology piece can do better. Namely, I don't have to get my my um, face up to a screen because there is no screen. It is completely um, accessible through voice. It's built to be that way. Um, and I must say I'm surprised that they went ahead and added the feature of downloading everything directly to the device and also automatic podcast management. The book port is able to do podcasts but it cannot automatically manage them for you. It cannot delete them. Which I think is a real shame because I found out very quickly that if I didn't delete the podcasts manually that it immediately, it completely ate up my SD card storage space. And the only way to manually manage them was to either go back in on the um, on the book port and delete the necessary episodes. And that's another interesting quirk is that the book port, if I want to download a new episode, 
it's almost like it was downloading and yet it didn't immediately show up in, in, in the list. So I'm wondering if the Victor Stream doesn't have the bookport beat in that respect. Um, so there's that with the Victor Stream. Another possibility is the Blaze. This is the Blaze EZ. The one that I would probably be going for personally is the Blaze ET, which is the more souped up version with a numeric keypad and some additional features. Now, as I understand it, the eventual goal of the Blaze lineup is to be able to do what the Victor Stream already can which is again downloading basically the stream from what I understand from what I've read in the manual and what I saw in a video the stream doesn't need the computer at all which is wonderful because the streams companion software and this was a driving decision for the bookport plus when I got it um, the streams companion software is Windows centric and I'm a Mac user so I wanted something that either worked with Mac or could be used completely independently so the Victor Stream has that going for it, but it also, but the one thing that the Blaze has going for it that none of the other players have at all is the fact that it's got the camera on the back. Why would somebody who's partially sighted or blind need a camera? Well, it, be, the ability to go into a library or into a restaurant and utilize the camera to take a picture of text and read it back to you without having to worry about because with all the other players on the market, we've got the Victor Stream, the Software NLS Bard Player, the Bookport Plus, the Book Sense, and the Plex Talk Pocket. All of these have the have one thing in common, which is the fact that um, if you want to have special navigation or books that have been you know carefully constructed with the blind in mind, you have to wait, and a lot of times you have to wait a great deal. These cannot play Kindle books. None of these devices can play Kindle books. I believe the um, Plex Talk or the Book Sense, maybe it was the Stream, one of these devices, I can't remember which, can play Audible books, but that's the only mainstream format that it will be able to play other than perhaps library books that have been ripped off of a CD. The problem is with the Audible books and with the um, with other books that are not DAISY, you lose out on that really robust navigation system. Um, but at the same time, having to in the case of the book in the case of the Victor Stream, it's not so much of a problem because I can go online and download the books that I want, much like I can with the Bard app on the iPhone. Um, but the, with the Bookport Plus, Book Sense, and Plex Talk Pocket. I basically have to hook it up to a computer, which these days I think is something is an antiquated way of doing things. Um, it's not a bad idea if you want to have your computer as a central hub, but to have to hook up to it, especially if you're out and about and you want to get a new book, with the Bookport Plus and the Plex Talk and the Victor in the um, Book Sense, you have no choice. You have to go with what you got. Whereas with the book with the Victor Stream you can go online directly on the stream and download what you want to the stream and it's an extremely robust system and so far it's out in front but at the same time there's the allure of being able to scan in whatever you want without having to wait for it you just take a picture and you go ahead and wait and it'll scan and it'll read it back to you so at this moment, the top two contenders for the possibility for the possibility of a next talking book player purchase. Oh, and you're probably wondering, well, wait a moment. You've got the NLS Bard app. Well, the problem is, um, let's say for instance that you're waiting for an important call and you have to save the battery and you happen to be running kind of low on battery. You can't get to a charger right away, and yet at the same time you want to listen to a book. Plus, um, another side effect, one of the interesting side effects that I've had with this player is sometimes it'll jump back without warning. I don't know why, but it'll sometimes just flip back um, a couple minutes or an hour in the book without warning. It'll just, do, it'll just happen. Um, whereas with something like the stream 
or the Blaze. Um, it's actually a really nice system. You can save your phone's battery, and you don't need to worry about um, issues with voiceover or anything, because these devices were purpose-built for a single purpose, um, which is to be a multimedia powerhouse. Think of it as an iPod without the screen, with the ability to play um, pretty much anything, including the specialized talking books. And the fact that the Stream and the Book Sense and the Bookport Plus are all reasonably priced. For assistant technology, these things are practically nothing as far as price goes. They're only like three or four hundred dollars, which is in reach of the average consumer. I'm not saying it's cheap, but it's a heck of a lot better than paying three or four thousand dollars for something that um, that is a lot more specialized. I mean, these these players, yes, they're specially built, but at the same time, they're right in line with the price of an iPod. Um, so it's really it's really interesting. What I'm what I'm wondering here is because I've got several people on my channel who already own the stream. Another problem that I remember when I was looking for the stream versus the Bookport Plus is the fact that it had this really annoying whine from the internal microphone. I don't know if that's still the case, but um, anybody out there who has a stream that can chime in, I don't know. Basically, the question is: go for the stream or wait for the Blaze ET to come out, which is going to be in the summer. The one thing about the Blaze lineup is the fact that they cost double what a standard what a standard player of this class would cost. Um, but at the same time, you don't have the ability of any other player to take a picture of text and have it read back to you like you do on, on the Blaze. And I do have Prismo on the iPhone, but there's an interesting side effect. If you take a picture of anything with, with, a, with, a, with an image, it will go around, and I've had this happen more than once, it will go around and say, page detected, ready to shoot, and what I end up shooting is a picture on the page as opposed to the text, and it'll say no text detected. That's very annoying. Um, so I would like to hear your thoughts. So should I go ahead and get the stream? Should I wait for the blaze? Should I... Um, you know, should I just stick to what I have? Because I don't, I don't know. There, there are definitely advantages. One of the big ones, like I said, is the ability to save your phone's battery and utilize a dedicated device. Plus, it's a, it's an interesting solution in the fact that, um, yes, these devices have Wi-Fi, but unlike an iPhone to read, using an iPhone to read your books, you don't get bombarded with, with notifications. Um, from things like, um, you know, text messages, email, that sort of thing. So it's a nice way to read if you want a dedicated reading experience that, that is out of the way of everything else. And yes, I know you could turn on airplane mode on your phone, but then again, we go back to the scenario of waiting for that very important call. So, I don't know, what do you guys think? Stream users, I'd like you to chime in. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome and have a nice day.